FALPAD's Error Resolution CERT 154, Missing Student Incident Record for Student. So what is the CERT 44? Well, the first thing you always want to do is consult the CALPADS error list. And here is a screenshot of the CALPADS error list. On the left, you see the error name and the error number. These are fields used for reference so that you can identify the error from your certification details and know where to find the resolution in the CALPADS error list. Now, the problem is described in the error description. Student incident result and student offense records must have an associated student incident record. Okay, and so then on the far right, skipping over the severity in the fields validated, you see the suggested resolution. And it has two parts, understanding the error and then suggested resolutions, right? And I like to think that understanding the error tells us what CalPads expect. What are the optimal conditions in CalPads? If your data is reported correctly, what should be there, right? And so it says under understanding the error, a student has no student incident record associated to a student offense record or student results record within the same academic year. And then at the very bottom, it says suggested resolution, submit the appropriate student incident record. So that's the only way to correct this error according to the error list. And the demonstration will give you a couple options for fixing this error. And so then uh, lastly, what's significant is the fields validated. And it tells us that the sync data is validated against the SERS and the SOF, okay? Now, what's not described in this particular error is that either an existing SERS or SOF can trigger a CERT 154 for a missing sync or a missing student incident, all right? And so you may have two records that we call orphan records that are not associated to a sink, or you may have one of each type that can trigger this error that's not associated to a sink, okay? And so again, in the demonstration, we'll show you how to use the error list and put everything together for you. Let's first think about or explain the order of submission for incidents, right? The first file submitted is your student incident file. We call that the sink. For each incident, one or more student incident records, which include the SSIDs of the students submitted. The unique incident ID allows multiple records from each record type to be linked to a single occurrence. So the sync establishes your incident, right? You need it to submit a SERS and a SOF. The SERS, which would be most likely the second, but not necessarily, for each incident, one or more student incident results records of the students involved in the incident should be submitted. A separate student incident results record for each student and each different result is required, okay? So each student in the incident needs a SERS record. Each result, so if a student has multiple results, a suspension and an in-school suspension, that student will have two SERS records. Or if they served a suspension prior to an expulsion, they would have two SERS records. Or even if there was no action, you submit a SERS record saying no action, okay? So every record should have a sync and a SERS. And then the third file submitted is the student offense. We call that the SOF. A student offense record uh, that's submitted for any student is required if the student commits the offense, the SOF is required. You have to tell us why a student has been suspended or expelled, right? And so uh, not every incident has an offense. This is an optional uh, file type. It's an optional record type. Um, some students have um, incidents and they're behavioral, right? And so maybe it's a, a incident that's not involving an offense, but they're a danger to themselves and they need a behavioral restraint. Or uh, it's an emotional outburst. And to keep the class in order, they are secluded. They, to keep the class in order, they are secluded from the rest of the class. So those are things to look at.
So here we try to show you the association and the relationships between the files. In green are the like fields that tie the incident together. Certainly the SSID would be a like field, but for this particular demonstration or what we're trying to explain is the importance of the incident local ID, the school of attendance, and the academic year. That's how we know multiple students are tied to a single incident because that incident ID, school of attendance and academic year says this is the event, this is the incident. And that comes from the sink and you need matching school of attendance, academic year ID and incident local IDs in the SERS and the SOF as well. So let's think about what are the potential causes for the CERT 154? Why would I have a SERS or SOF and no sync? How is it possible for me to submit a student result and a student offense and not have a student incident in the first place? Okay, there's only two, right? The deleted sync records have left orphan SERS and SOF records, right? Orphan results and orphan offenses. And this could happen um, either batch file, you went to delete uh, your incident submissions and you missed a SERS or SOF. You successfully deleted a file that was submitted uh, for student incidents. It could happen online. Maybe you deleted the student incident online and not the SERS and SOF and the records were left orphaned. And then the sync is a full replacement file, right? So it's possible that there was a submission in the sync record and unintentionally replaced records in the sync and their corresponding SERS and SOF records remain creating orphan records again. So those are generally the two situations in which this may occur. And so we understand how we created these records but there's something else you need to consider, right? And that's system functionality complications, right? And so there's restrictions in how we submit uh, the incident record based on design functionality. And so only complete records are visible in the CalPED user interface. So we have orphan SERS and soft records, but we can't see them because the sync is missing. To see a record, the sync and SERS must be both be posted. So we can't see the incident. We deleted it. We have a SERS, but we can't see it without the sync in the student detail screen, right? And so that makes it a little bit difficult and you have to understand the method. And that's why we're demonstrating uh, how to resolve this error. And so let's consider the methods of resolution. Can we submit a new soft and SERS batch file and the orphan records will be replaced due to the nature of full replacement processing? No, this will not work because the operational keys for the sync and SERS include the missing incident ID and will remain while the other records are replaced. So simply submitting new offense and results files will not overwrite these orphan records. How about we just blow everything up, delete all sync, SERS, and soft records using transaction type D. Okay, this may work, and we use yellow for caution, but there's no guarantee that the orphan records will be extracted from your sys and deleted. If you just submitted your incident submission and, and these files were saved locally on your desktop, this may work. But what we do know that will work, what we do know that will work is you can recreate the sync records online and associate the orphan records to complete the incident. And at this time, you can either leave the complete incident because the sync was deleted accidentally, or if it was a deliberate deletion, you can delete all the associated file types, including that sync and remove the record altogether. Either way, the CERT 154 will be resolved. So this was a lot to take in, right? But we did provide a demo. Okay, so we are going to try to resolve a CERT 154 today. So the CERT 154 says missing student incident sync record for a student. We click the show button and our list of students will appear eventually. 
So we have one student, right? And you have two links. You have the SSID and then you have the local ID. Here's the problem. The error tells us that we're missing the incident, the sync information. Well, that's where the incident ID comes from. So if we click this, there's no incident that it will send us to. So I'll right click and open a new tab, right? And perhaps we'll get an error. And then if I right click uh, the SSID, CalPad's functionality restricts us from seeing on the student details screen a incident record unless the sync and the search has been submitted. Well, if there's no sync in CalPads, uh, we're not going to be able to see the search. So to demonstrate what I just said, there's no incident, so it can't take us to the incident screen. We get an error occurred. And then the link to uh, the student's profile, and forgive us, we have to uh, protect the student's information, so there's some blurriness uh, on the screen. Um, we open up the incident results, and we're not going to find the corresponding uh, incident. So let's see. Um, the number is 98696. Incident ID 98696. See, it's not amongst these. And you don't see an associated soft. There's no visibility because the incident's missing. So what can we do? Right? What can we do? So, uh, you know, let's just, um, you would consult the error list and see what I just told you. Student incident result, SIRS and soft records must have a incident sync record. We can't see them using the CalPads UI, the user interface, because there's no sync. So this is a little bit problematic, right? We don't know if it's SIRS and a SOF or just the SIRS or perhaps it's just a SOF. We don't know what the orphan record is. You can see all the f file, all the fields that are validated. Okay. And you see that they're consistent between the three fields. Right. So what we can do is go back to our error and we have the school, the LEA, the student, and the local ID. And since it's only one error, it's not a bunch of students tied to it, I can create an incident. And so um, when you're doing um, seal it correction, sometimes you have to create a temporary record only to delete it so you can clean up erroneous data. That's the theory we're working on right now. So I'm going to open in a new window because I want to see side by side, right? All right, so we have the cert 154 and we're going to create a new incident. Now, I have a state level account, so I'm going to select the LEA. You don't have to do this because your account is associated to an LEA. And then uh, School of Attendance. Um, and apply, right? So I'm going to add a new incident because that's what's missing. Okay, again, I have to select the LEA. School of Attendance. Incident ID local. So that's important, right? Because that's the field that we have to get correct. That's 98696. So if you can't see it, 
I'll try to make it a little bit bigger and easier for everyone to see. That's going to be my incident ID local. Okay. And then uh, the date. Um, and so I don't have the student's enrollment history in front of me. I'm going to guess that the student was enrolled in February. Now, you have the student's information. You should know the date, right? Um, but we're just going to fabricate the information to the best of our ability, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, we won't publish this video. You'll never see it. And again, I'm copying the student's SSID, which should be blurred out uh, just because we want to protect the student's information. Um, okay, I think that's 10 digits. And then you can see on online maintenance, uh, it's going to pull this information. And so I'm selecting statutory offense indicator only because um, I don't know if there's an offense record. And if there is, I want it to to say yes so that I have the ability to delete it, which means I might have two offense records if there was one that needs to be deleted. And no action. So this, I don't know if that, if that might be all the required fields. Let's try. Okay, so we've just got a warning here. We're going to post and see what happens. So we're looking for incident 98696. 98696. So we're going to open um, the incident. And so we can see that the student has one incident record, one result record. So we just we just uh, we just created this, but the student has two offenses. So we know that it was an offense record that was triggering uh, the CERT one fifty four, and so there's a delete button at the top that should delete everything. For the incident. However, if you're if you're wary and you're nervous about that, simply click edit and then delete. Edit and then delete. Right? That will get rid of your offenses. Then click edit, delete. That will get rid of the result. And then the last thing you would do is delete the incident information. And since there's the only student that will delete the incident, okay? That should delete it. Um, this should delete everything as well. The whole incident and the associated files should be deleted all at once. Um, however you do it is fine. Just remember, if you're going to do it uh, individually by um, module or by student record, you work from the bottom up. Um, it's like if you have a hijacked SSID, you have to delete all the student information, whether it's course, uh, CELA record, um, demographic record, before you get to the enrollment because you lose ownership and you can't see it once you lose ownership. If you just delete the enrollment record, the associated files are not visible to you. Well, that's the same, um, same thing going on here, right? What, if you delete this first, the associated sync and SIRS are not visible. And that's what happens. Sometimes in the file submission, this happens. Um, but uh, in this case, that, that is what happens. So just keep that in mind as you're working through your CERT 154s. Uh, that's how we have to resolve them now.